ask you some questions about data analytics. Sure. Tell us about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so my name is Steve, and I am the Data and Insights Lead at SAP Nitro. And SAP Nitro is an agency that basically sits at the intersection of brand storytelling and technology. And my role at Sapien is to help our clients develop uh, an, an analytic strategy and to give them basically a roadmap to accomplish the things that they want to do with data and analytics. What is data analytics to you? So data analytics, uh, it involves a lot of different things from technology services to different governance uh, and frameworks and people. Uh, but at the end of the day, it really boils down to just being able to make better decisions faster. Why do businesses need analytics? Data analytics is proven to be able to give businesses uh, a comparative advantage. The businesses that are leveraging data uh, and analytics can make better, like I said, better decisions faster. So uh, it's definitely, a, a, I think, a key component to being more competitive in today's uh, digital marketing world. How has data analytics changed over the past few years? It's changed mostly on the technology side, I think. There's been a lot of kind of evolution on uh, the vendors that kind of drive the analytics industry from the big companies like Adobe and Google all the way down to new startups, um, which is great. So the tools have become very sophisticated, uh, but what hasn't happened, I think, in the last couple of years is we haven't evolved the way that we hire and think about people in the same way. That's great. What are three qualities that you think a data analyst needs? Yeah, uh, so I like to call it the, the three C's. So uh, they need to be critical thinkers, they need to be great communicators, and by communication I don't just mean verbal communication, they need to be great at communicating data, uh, and they also need to be collaborative. Uh, so they can't just sit at their desk, they need to be uh, very comfortable uh, collaborating with different disciplines and business functions. What are some biggest challenges in data analytics? So what we're seeing now is that a lot of clients are over invested in technology. So a big challenge for them is how do they kind of reshape their structure to be uh, to have the right balance of people and technology. Another challenge is that a lot of our clients don't have a vision in place for analytics. So you have to have a roadmap for uh, and plan for what you want to accomplish with analytics. So um, that's another major challenge I think we see. People are, are central to ensuring that the tools are working properly and that they're interpreting the results properly. Um, and I'd say that people are more important than the technology itself. How can you visualize and interpret data meaningfully? Yeah, so there's, I guess, two questions there. On the visualization side, um, it's kind of a, there's an art to visualizing data, but you can really start with the fundamentals. So, uh, and there's lots of great resources online to help you know what chart is right, uh, whether it's a line chart or a scatter plot based on what you're trying to communicate. But there's also uh, a lot of good principles that you can learn in terms of like chart formatting and how to effectively present data. On the interpretation side, uh, the, again, that really boils down to practice. So it takes time to kind of nurture your skills as, as an analyst. Um, but what it really involves is being able to go beyond just kind of top line analysis and metrics and go deep into a, a problem that you're trying to solve. What are some major trends in Asia's digital scene? Yeah, so in uh, Asia Pacific, I think one of the major things that we see is that the appetite for data and analytics services is high, so lots of our clients are asking for it, but the maturity level is still a little bit low. And by maturity, I mean they haven't unlocked the, the appropriate budgets yet. Um, they're not quite ready to advance to more sophisticated use cases, so going beyond just basic reporting and analysis to like multivariate testing, and et cetera. So maturity has a, has a bit, bit of a ways to go. But on a more positive side, one of the things we notice in Asia Pacific, and specifically Singapore, is that it's becoming kind of a, a hub for talent. So you've got great schools like SMU and NUS actually building out uh, really interesting analytics and data, data science programs. Uh, and it's great to see that they're really nurturing the talent in this industry. Last question. Yep. Where do you see digital analytics heading in the next five years? So the IDC predicts that 20, by 2019, uh, the industry will be, the turnover in the industry will be something like $43 billion. Um, but aside from the technology, what I think will be really, uh, uh, what, where you see the most change is the way that we think about this industry. Traditionally, a lot of people thought uh, analytics, data and analytics was just a business function, uh, but it's really a discipline, and it's a discipline that involves lots of different types of people, from engineers to analysts to visual storytellers. And I think uh, you're going to see that kind of conversation evolve over the next couple of years. And what that means is that companies will get a lot better at hiring and developing uh, analytics talent and, and programs.